To everyone, it's Marketino. So, welcome to my first Q&A video. Um, about two weeks have passed since the unveiling of my first supercar. And the interest, as well as the support we have shown, was simply amazing. I even asked you to post me questions, thoughts or ideas about the GTR or about me in general. And the engagement I have seen is fantastic over 1000 comments and lots lots of questions to answer so let's head inside the new office and start to answer to everyone so yeah basically this is my new office view and i cannot really complain about that the main topic of this q a is why the gtr when I unveiled the car, I noticed that I surprised most of you and I'm glad about that because that was also what I was aiming so I can say mission accomplished about that. I know that some of you might be disappointed by the fact that I'm not shooting this video from the cockpit of an Italian supercar. I'm Italian after all and this is also a, a controversial choice. So I was looking through my Instagram, Facebook and YouTube where you all posted your questions and uh, let's start uh, from the beginning, from the research of my first supercar. It started more than a couple of years ago and uh, the idea was to aim for a desirable as well as an affordable supercar and everything started with the Aston Martin V8 Vantage. I really love that car, I love the style, the noise it makes. I think the class of an Aston Martin is unmatchable. I even test drove one and I quite liked it. But I have to admit that they're not really the kind of cars meant to be straight piped or being driven like a maniac around the corners. But I have to admit that I'd love to own an Aston Martin someday. Maybe think that I'm too young for that kind of car. Some of you guessed also about the Maserati Gran Turismo, which is kind of the same car in terms of driving and comfort. It was on my list of potential cars. I managed to test drive a few thanks to Maserati, but as soon as I drove one, I realized that wasn't really what I was looking in a car. That's more like of a GT car with more comfort than performance. And I was looking for the opposite. So thinking uh, of my budget and potential cars and thinking of a car that will match my driving style, I came up with the idea of look for an Audi R8 V8 possibly six pin manual which is not very easy to find actually i found a few and i was really tempted even to go in germany and uh, drive one i found a blue one which was very nice with a low mileage but as soon as i started to look for that kind of car paul from supercars of london bought one thanks paul so basically i started to look for something else Many of you were expecting me to get an Italian supercar, but the thing is that uh, it's a dream for me to be able someday to own an Italian supercar. More precisely, I would say a uh, Ferrari. Last year, I was close from fulfilling this dream. I don't know if you follow the market of second-hand supercars. Basically, um, 12 months ago, almost all the Ferrari models started to raise in terms of value uh, for example my favorite modern supercar that i would really love to own someday is the 430 scuderia last year it was possible to buy a, a good example with a low mileage for about 100 thousand euros it wasn't really on my budget last year maybe in one year or two i would have been able to get close to buy one if the price remained the same but the thing is that Last year, it was possible to buy one for about 100,000 euros. Today, if you want to buy a Scuderia with a decent mileage, you have to spend at least 
170,000 euros. This is insane. The growth that this model had in one year. Well, maybe if I sold my kidneys 12 months ago, yeah, probably I would have been close to have one, but now it's out of my reach, sadly. I didn't lost my hope though, because I wanted to fulfill in any case my dream of having a Ferrari. And at that time, 12 months ago, um, there were some other Ferrari models that were still affordable. So I came up with the idea to dress some funky clothes, uh, put a cassette player of Phil Collins and enjoy on the seaside a uh, white wrapped Ferrari Testarossa. That was a car that was still affordable 12 months ago, but still, even that car has grown so much in terms of value and now we have to spend something like 90,000 euros for that. 12 months ago I was considering the Testarossa, but I wasn't very sure to want to own a Ferrari from the 80s because that's not really a car that you can daily drive nor a car that you can actually drive for the whole weekend. I will say that was more like of a Sunday toy. It would have been cheap to buy, but I have the fear that it would have been quite expensive to maintain by hoping that nothing would have broken down. So, not a Sarossa, I tried to look for a more recent Ferrari model, the 355. Actually, I seriously considered one finished Argento Nürburgring with full blue leather interior. That was one of the most amazing 355 I have ever seen. It was still very affordable. I was tempted, but doubtful. For basically the same reasons as the Testarossa. Will they be able to drive it on a daily drive? Will it be cheap to maintain? I wasn't very sure. So the more I was thinking, the more all the 355 were starting to grow in terms of value. And same story as the Testarossa 12 months ago and now. Basically, you have to spend twice to have one. That's too much, I think, for a car like that. But I realized how stupid I was as soon as I test drove Scuderia Baldini's 355 F1 Spider because I realized that would have been a great investment not only in terms of uh, money because basically the price have doubled in 12 months but also in terms of fun that's the main factor if you buy a car the fun factor and I have to admit the 355 is one of the most engaging cars I have ever driven and I repent so so badly not to have bought one I really hope that someday in the future the prices will go down because if the prices will start to go down I might consider from everyone that's an incredible Ferrari model so after the 355 I stopped to look for potential cars because I realized that it wasn't really a priority to me. I mean, uh, if you follow me on my social media and YouTube, you realize that I spend quite a lot of time behind the wheel of supercars, of private customers or press cars lent from manufacturers. I made a calculation and in 2015, I drove something like 17,000 kilometers with cars uh, coming from collectors or manufacturers. It's not bad at all, to be honest. Driving the GTR around Japan, the Porsche Targa around the French coast, driving several Ferrari models around Italy, Lamborghini. This is like living a dream. Obviously, the idea to start uh, the new year with a supercar was still alive. So, obviously, the idea to start the new year with a supercar was still alive. So around the end of summer, I came up with the plan to build new uh, collaboration and sponsorships. And with the arrival of Euro Import Pneumatici, I came up with the, um, the conclusion that it was the perfect occasion to aim for something more than what was originally planned 
and thanks to Eurimpor Pneumatici, I managed to get a GTR, which is honestly one of the biggest surprises of 2015. I had such a great time around Japan with this car, and honestly, I don't find it a boring supercar like many people say. I think you have to actually drive one and realize how good this car is, especially around Japan. This car is very different. It's built with a very different philosophy from the German supercars, the Danish supercars, and so on. Um, I really had good fun to read all the comments you left on my YouTube and social media platforms. And uh, yeah, many of you were hoping to see an Alfa Romeo Fossi in my garage. If you have seen both reviews of the Coupe and Spider, you realize how much I like that car. It's a fantastic car to drive, very engaging and very pleasant. But the thing is, that kind of car doesn't really match what I really need in a sports car or supercar. I need a supercar that has to be a daily drive and the 4C is everything but a daily drive. It has a small boot, doesn't have any kind of soundproof. You cannot really drive it every day and cover 10, 20,000 kilometers in one year. Just look at Sam from Glass. he had one and he sold it after like 6 months or so. Uh, last year, between the Coupe and Spider, I've covered something like 7000 kilometers. And honestly, I wouldn't want to own one. Fantastic car, once again, but it's not the right car for me. That's not what I'm looking in a car. When I drove the Forsy Spider, around the end of 2015, I've covered about 3,000 kilometers in a week. And I'm not kidding by saying that as soon as I returned the car to Alfa Romeo, in the following week, I went to my chiropractor for something like three or four times to have my back fixed, because seriously, it was hurting. Covering 3,000 kilometers in one week, you really have to be crazy. And I'm not sure if I will ever do it again with a car like that. I don't want my hairs to bleed or my back to hurt after every trip. That's too much for me. Last but not least, uh, the Jaguar F-Type. Basically, most of you were like, okay, I just know the answer. Marco is about to get an F-Type. He, he loved that car so much that I'm sure he's gonna get a Jack. Well, the thing is that I was seriously considering even the F-Type. Probably an F-Type S V6 or maybe even a V8, but more likely a V6 S. Basically, I drove every possible version last year and I covered lots of miles. I know the car very well and I really loved it. That would have been an ideal daily drive. But the thing is that I wanted something different because Sam from Symphro Glass already has an F-Type. I enjoyed the car quite a lot last year, so basically it was kind of if I owned one, because I covered thousands and thousands of miles with different F-Type models. So also in terms of content, I wanted to get a different cars from Tim, Paul, Sam and all the other spotters. And I don't really repent from this choice. So basically, this was the story from the beginning of their search of my first supercar until now. Moving on, more questions. Some of you ask about the modifications I will do to this car. Uh, some of you asked if I'm going to modify the interior. Honestly, um, I will leave the interior as you will see it. I don't even know what could be modified inside the GTR. The interior is quite nice. I think the only thing I would replace, but I don't think I will do it because it's not a priority nor on my list, are the pedals. I've seen on the internet some carbon fiber pedals that look pretty cool, but that's not really a priority to, to me. So I think I will keep the interior completely stock. On the outside, as I mentioned on the unveiling video, I will do some modifications. Um, the exhaust, 
the wrap, uh, the wheels, I will probably tint the windows as well. I think that's it in terms of external modifications. The car will be wrapped I think before mid-March, so by that time I aim to have the car ready. More questions related to the GTR, the power. Am I going to make the GTR a 1000 horsepower Bugatti Veyron Beater? No, because it's simple. 550 horsepower is more than enough for a daily drive. And the thing is that if I've learned something from honing a modified Abarth is that the more modifications you put, the more the car becomes unreliable. Over the years I had quite some problems with the Abarth and I don't want to repeat this story. And also, this car has still two years of warranty and if you put modifications like bigger turbos or anything that would increase the power, you terminate the warranty and uh, I don't really want to break something that the warranty doesn't cover. That would be quite expensive and I don't really want to run that risk. It's not worth it. 550 horsepower is quite enough, don't you think so? Track. Am I going to track them my car? Uh, more precisely, lots of Italian followers asked if I'm going to track date around Italian racetracks such as Monza, Imola, Modena. The thing is that I might try to track day the GTR, but just when the track basically will be empty or when I will manage to have the track just for myself. If there's something I've learned from track days is that you can be the best uh, and the most uh, safe driver in the world. But the thing is that you have to be extremely careful at the other drivers because I've seen so many times cars crashing into the others because the other drivers were very uh, stupid or with cars with poor brakes, tires that's quite dangerous and the thing is that if you crash on the racetrack no matter if you crash into someone or someone crashes into you the insurance doesn't cover any cost so basically, you're f***ed up. I would love also to go to the Nürburgring. Probably I will do it. I don't, I'm not sure if you have seen my video with the Abarth. I really drove it like a maniac, flat out. I really advise you to go and see the video. I'm not sure if uh, I will do the same with the GTR. That's basically the most dangerous racetrack in the world. There is no room for mistakes. Future trips with the GTR. As I just mentioned, I would love to go to the Dunbergring, which means that the plan is to make uh, some kind of German road trip. I would love to go up to the Nürburgring and on my way up and down back to Italy, I would love to visit also some factories, tuners and everything related to the car wood. So a German road trip is uh, on the way to be planned. Other trips with the GTR, in April I will start a road trip from North Italy starting with the Cars and Coffee Italy with their first event of this year. Then with some friends we will drive up on the Swiss and French Alps. Then we will head down to Monaco and we will stay there for about a week for the Tokmak Monaco week. For the moment I have these two road trips planned but I will do more in the future, that's for sure. Collaborations. Many of you ask that now that I have a supercar, you wonder whether I'm going to collaborate or not with the British crew, such as Tim from Shmi 150, Paul from Supercars of London, Sam from Seafru Glass, and all the others. Well, yeah, I think that will be very cool to meet up all together and shoot some content with all the cars. I think a good opportunity will be in April during the top mark as well as the Cars and Coffee Italy. I think that we will certainly shoot some content together as soon as we will meet up. And the Braille Spalanca with Stefano Secondo Testo Male. 
Yes, I think it will be very interesting to shoot some videos with the GTR and with the Stefano. He is basically one of the biggest Ferrari star that I know, and I think it will be very interesting to hear his thoughts. Uh, on a very different kind of car from what he has used to experience. So yes, I think that a trip to Rome with the GTR is on its way. There are lots of exciting collaboration planned for this year and uh, I will look forward to create lots of exciting and fun content for you guys. I think this will be a pretty amazing year for me and also for, for your entertainment. So, back to more questions related to the GTR. Some people wonder, can you make a launch control at traffic lights? Well, over the year I will shoot some launch control videos and reaction. I will come up with some cool ideas related to the launch control feature. You know how brutal this car is with launch control. But the thing is that launch control is not very good for the transmission. So. Don't expect me to do a launch control at every traffic light because I found out that um, a new transmission is something like 20, 25,000 euros to replace. So I want really to avoid this potential cost. Yeah. <laughs> so don't, don't really expect me to do launch control all the time. So the GTR is all-wheel drive and some people wonder uh, if I'm going to make uh, the GTR real-wheel drive and if right now it is able to drift. Well, yeah, many people think, oh, it's all-wheel drive, so it has just a um, monster grip and it can just understeer. But the thing is that even though it, the GTR is all-wheel drive, most of the power goes to the back wheels. So when the road is dry, uh, the GTR is a monumental grip, but when the road starts to become uh, wet or when it rains, even if you don't turn off completely the traction control, the car is really able to drift and do massive power slides. Yeah. There are even some questions related to my Abarth. Well, basically, when I unveiled the GTR, uh, some of you thought that I would have sold the car and many of you have shown interest in buying the car. Uh, I'm sorry to say but my Abarth is not for sale, I'm gonna keep it and if you see properly the unveiling video I said also why I'm gonna keep it. And no, the Abarth doesn't have a catalyst, it has a completely straight pipes exhaust without the catalyst, so yeah, it's pretty noisy and I'm gonna do the same also with the GTR. <laughs> Is the acceleration additive? Yeah, the acceleration is quite additive. Uh, you have a lot of grip, uh, the turbo keep you pushed to the seat and you do a first second gear in a couple of seconds and you can really hit, reach very high speed. Am I going to liberty walk the GTR? I'll be honest, my right side, which is quite strong, <laughs> Would love to have a Liberty Walk GTR, but the thing is that with the massive spoilers, uh, the white body kit, the spacers through the wheels, uh, that will be quite illegal. And uh, there is a quite high risk that if I get pulled over, the car gets sized. So I don't want to run this risk. What is your dream car garage? So basically, if I had the opportunity to have five dream cars in my garage, it will be mostly Italian. Uh, the first one will be the 40, 430 Scuderia, the Enzo, then probably I will go for uh, Pagani Zonda C12S, and last but not least, an Aston Martin. Probably um, a V12 Vantage Roadster, six-speed manual. That will be perfect. Is the ride comfort as bad as people say? Honestly, I have never heard someone complaining about the comfort of the GTR. After two weeks of ownership, I can say that this is a remarkable daily drive. The seats are very comfy. Um, you can put the suspension in comfort mode. I basically keep them in comfort mode all the time. 
this is a very comfortable supercar i think that if you want a powerful uh, and comfortable daily drive with more than 500 horsepower i think that probably the only few cars available to do that in a very good way are the gtr and the 911 turbo i think these are the two best cars on the market for this purpose are you changing the exhaust system on the gtr if you are changing please get an extremely loud one <laughs> Yes, that's one of the first things I said when I unveiled the car. And basically, as soon as I finished this Q&A video, I just have to drive on the other side of the road, uh, get into the dealership that I can see from here and have the exhaust fitted. So yes, by the time you will see this video, the new exhaust will be already fitted and you will see the new videos very shortly. And yes, it will be loud as hell. <laughs> what is the maintenance cost of your GTR? Just after two weeks, uh, I cannot really tell much, but uh, um, in like two or three months, we get better idea of what are the real costs of daily driving a GTR, and I will make a proper video. It's the same as the miles per gallon. Honestly, I don't really look at that factor. When it's time to fill up the car, I just fill it up. I will tell you also about the fuel consumption of this car. Alex Molik, when will you gift me an Enzo? Shut up! Best car brand in your opinion? I would say that Ferrari is one of my main manufacturers. I really admire Enzo Ferrari for what he has built from nothing. He's a, a great businessman and a very genius and visionary man from what he has been able to create that's one of the persons that i admire most in my life and i'm a great fan of ferrari in general but also that's the same reason also for pagani is a man that from nothing he managed to build in less than 20 years um, a brand that is very exclusive and desired in the world he makes one of the best cars in the world basically and he managed to achieve that in a short amount of time many companies tried to do that but they failed so i will say that two of my favorite car companies are ferrari and pagani you frequently says that you love manual gearboxes calls are more involving so why you ended up with the gtr probably the queen of digital supercars this is also one of the reasons why I keep the Albert. It's five-speed manual and it's very fun to drive. Honestly, what kind of modern supercar would you get with a manual gearbox? Basically, nothing. Until recent times, it was possible to get a six-speed manual Lamborghini Gallardo or Ferrari F430 for a decent price. But now, basically, if you think about that, there are no recent supercars in the market available with uh, a manual gearbox. And you say that that's a digital supercar. Sort of, yes, it has a lot of electronics, but basically you can turn it off. It's uh, still a fun supercar in any case. And as I mentioned, Italian followers keep asking me, why do you shoot your videos only in English? Well, I think it's simple because I have a um, worldwide audience. I don't have followers just from Italy, but from all around the world. I'm glad to have millions of visitors and followers that uh, look at my content every month. And shooting the content uh, just in Italian will be a great limitation for everyone. So basically, I shoot all the content in English and I spent quite a lot of time to provide the Italian as well as the English subtitles in all the videos whenever I speak. Is there anything you dislike about the car? 
if there's something that I found out when I had the GTR around Japan as well as after a couple of weeks of ownership yeah there are a few things I don't really like inside the GTR the multimedia system yeah hopefully this one is in Italian but the thing is that it has too many buttons and things to play with that I, after a few weeks I'm still not very used to this multimedia system it's too complicated and perhaps with a lot of useless things and another thing that I dislike in the GTR is the way they have put these buttons to open and close the windows basically you can this is very uncomfortable you cannot do it from this way it's, this is stupid Nissan this is stupid do girls dig it and did your potential to get lead level increase well basically yes when you get a supercar no matter which kind of supercar you get a lot more attention especially from the girls and basically because the world is full of gold diggers and that's not really the kind of girl that i came to have in my life so basically even though, yes, my chances increase with the GTR, I don't really want to use the car for this purpose. But I want to do the opposite. I want to stay away from gold diggers. What do you think of the name Godzilla? Does it fit for you? Honestly, I don't care. GTR or 599? Probably 599. I test drove my friend Stefano's 599. That's a quite remarkable GT car. You cannot really beat the noise of that V12. And last year I managed also to drive a six-speed manual 599. That's one of the most engaging uh, and exciting supercars I have ever driven in my life. I mean, V12, six-speed manual, how can you beat a combination like that? So, how does the killer system work? The GTR features a killer system. Let's close the car. Um, you can open the car with uh, the key. You can keep it in the pocket. Uh, you just have to go close to the car, press this button, and the car opens. Um, same story about starting it. Uh, you don't have to plug the key anywhere. You can keep it in the pocket and you just simply have to press the engine start. Very simple. Maybe one thing you don't know about the key of the GTR is that there is a key inside the key. Just in case you break the electronic key. You see? But I realized that not all the keyless system have this thing. For example, the keyless of the new Ferraris, such as the 488, doesn't have this feature. So basically, if you break the keyless system, you cannot open or start the car anymore. That was it. Thanks to all of you for the support you're showing, as well as all the interest you have shown so far. I hope to have answered to all of you. And in case I haven't done that, don't worry because I'm going to make more Q&A videos in the future. I hope you guys did enjoy the video and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more. And as always, thanks for watching. This is the beginning of an exciting year. Many followers have been asking me when I would have got myself a supercar.